Today, we're embarking on an epic journey through time to explore the fascinating history of Rome. From its modest beginnings to its incredible rise as a world-dominating empire and its eventual fall, Rome's story is one that continues to captivate us. The Founding of Rome, Myth and Reality Picture this, it's 753 BC, and two brothers, Romulus and Remus, are squabbling over who gets to name their new city. Legend has it that Romulus won by killing his brother. Talk about taking sibling rivalry to the extreme. And just like that, Rome was born. But let's get real for a second. While this myth is cool, archaeologists have found evidence of settlements in the area dating back to the 10th century BC. So, Rome's true origins might be a bit less dramatic, but no less interesting. For about 250 years, Rome was ruled by kings. But these weren't just any kings, the last few were Etruscans, a neighboring civilization that had a big impact on early Roman culture. They gave Rome its sewers, gladiatorial games, and even the toga. The Roman Republic In 509 BC, the Romans decided they'd had enough of kings. They booted out the last one, Tarquin the Proud, and established the Roman Republic. Now, don't get too excited, this wasn't exactly democracy as we know it. Power was mostly in the hands of wealthy patricians, but it was a start. During this time, Rome started flexing its muscles. They conquered their Latin neighbors and then set their sights on the rest of Italy. By 265 BC, they controlled the entire Italian peninsula. Not bad for a city that started as a small hill town. The Punic Wars Rome's next big challenge came from across the Mediterranean, Carthage. These two powerhouses duped it out in three epic conflicts known as the Punic Wars. The second one is particularly famous because of a guy named Hannibal. He decided the best way to attack Rome was to march an army, including war elephants, over the Alps. Talk about thinking outside the box. Despite Hannibal's creative tactics, Rome eventually won. By 146 BC, they had destroyed Carthage and taken control of much of the Mediterranean. Rome was now the big cheese of the ancient world. The Late Republic As Rome grew, so did its problems. The gap between rich and poor widened, and political violence became common. Powerful generals like Marius, Sulla, and Pompey started throwing their weight around. Enter Julius Caesar. This ambitious general crossed the Rubicon River with his army in 49 BC, sparking a civil war. He came out on top and made himself dictator. But some senators weren't too happy about this and decided to turn Caesar into a human pincushion on the Ides of March, 44 BC. The Roman Empire After more fighting, Caesar's adopted son Octavian emerged victorious. In 27 BC, he became Rome's first emperor, taking the name Augustus. He was smart enough to keep up the pretense of the Republic while holding all the real power. Smooth move, Augustus. Under Augustus and his successors, Rome entered a period known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. For about 200 years, the empire was mostly stable and prosperous. At its peak in the 2nd century AD, it stretched from Britain to Egypt, from Spain to the Middle East. Rome was on top of the world. Imperial highs and lows. Of course, not all emperors were created equal. For every wise Marcus Aurelius, there was a bonkers Caligula who made his horse a senator. Yes, you heard that right, a horse in the Senate. And let's not forget Nero, who allegedly fiddled while Rome burned. Talk about bad PR. The empire faced other challenges too. There were wars with the Parthians in the east and Germanic tribes in the north. Plague swept through the empire, and the economy started to struggle. The crisis of the 3rd century. The 3rd century AD was a rough time for Rome. In a 50-year period, there were about 26 emperors, most of whom met violent ends. The empire nearly collapsed under the weight of civil wars, invasions, and economic troubles. Emperor Diocletian tried to fix things by splitting the empire in two and creating the Tetrarchy, a system of four co-emperors. It was a good try, but it didn't last long. Constantine and Christianity In 312 AD, Constantine became emperor after winning a battle he attributed to the Christian god. This was a big deal because Christianity had been persecuted in the empire for centuries. 
Constantine made it legal, and it eventually became the official religion. Constantine also moved the capital to Byzantium, renaming it Constantinople. This shift eastward would have big consequences for the future of the empire. The Fall of Rome Despite efforts to keep it together, the Western Roman Empire continued to decline. In 410 AD, Rome itself was sacked by the Visigoths, the first time in 800 years an enemy had taken the city. Finally, in 476 AD, the last Western Roman emperor, ironically named Romulus Augustulus, was deposed by a Germanic chief named Odoacer. This date is traditionally used to mark the fall of the Western Roman Empire. But here's the thing, it wasn't as simple as barbarians knocking down the gates one day. The fall of Rome was a long, complex process involving economic issues, military problems, political instability, and massive population movements. The Eastern Empire While the Western Empire fell, the eastern half, centered on Constantinople, continued for another thousand years. We call this the Byzantine Empire, but they called themselves Romans right up until the end. The Byzantines kept Roman civilization alive, preserving Greek and Roman learning. They held off invasions from Persians, Arabs, and Turks for centuries. But eventually, they too fell, with Constantinople captured by the Ottoman Turks in 1453. Rome's Legacy Even after its fall, Rome's influence lived on. Roman law formed the basis of legal systems across Europe. Latin remained the language of scholars and the Catholic Church for centuries. And let's not forget about all the cool stuff the Romans invented or improved, concrete, aqueducts, roads, central heating, and even newspapers. The idea of Rome continued to inspire people long after its fall. Charlemagne tried to revive the Western Empire in 800 AD. Later, the Holy Roman Empire claimed to be its successor. Even Russia's rulers called themselves Tsars, from the Latin Caesar. And it's not just ancient history. Rome still captivates us today. We make movies about gladiators, write books about emperors, and flock to see Roman ruins. Heck, we even named planets after Roman gods. So there you have it, the incredible story of Rome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment telling us what ancient civilization you'd like us to explore next.